Hey everyone, it's Dick from Dick's Crossing, and welcome to the workbench. And today, this isn't the normal O scale O cage project video. Instead, we're gonna deal with something DC, and this is N gauge or N scale. Uh, a long time ago, I got involved with N gauge or N scale, and I had a 4x4 platform that, you know, is a starter platform. And I ended up having the stuff sit in boxes for years until recently one of my friends came over, uh, RJ from RJ78 Productions, and he brought over some of his HO stuff and we ran that in the living room for a few hours. So I then brought down my only remaining loop of end scale track and I ran trains, you know, um, for a few hours as well, just going through some of my older items in the collection, stuff I didn't even remember buying or was given way back when. So then the idea sparked, you know, we have a meet and greet coming up through another channel, it's Jay from JP Videos, and his meet and greet is at Horseshoe Curve. So I was thinking, you know, wouldn't it be cool if I could actually have a portable setup to take to either parks or rail fan sites, run a small loop of track, and then also enjoy the rail, you know, the actual rail fan experience when the trains finally arrive. So then I, kind of brought this to the attention of Heath from Humanity City Junction as well, and he said he had a similar idea, except using DCC, and he would like to run his trains at a local park. So here we are today, uh, it's a Blaine Heath moment. Anyways, if you guys are new to this hobby, uh, usually, you know, you need some track to run a train, then you also need a power source, and we call these transformers, and look at this one. This one's old, this one's from uh, the early 2000s, and this is a Bachman Hobby Transformer, and you get a DC in and out, and then an AC in and out, that's why these are colored red. So when this came out, you can see this red tape. This would have been taped over and used that for accessories only, because these locomotives use DC. Now there is something else called DCC, Direct Command Control, and those are for commanding units. And DC is quite simple, all you do is move this toggle on the transformer, and your train will move forward and reverse. So here's forward, and reverse, go in the opposite direction. So today we're going to try to bypass having a transformer that plugs into the wall. So you see this black cord runs you know, to your AC power supply in your house or any other place you have AC power. And then you come up with these two wires out that plug into your track through something called a lock-on, which is right here. So it is under the track and Kato or Kato systems have like this little piece that goes underneath the track to try to clean up any type of joints or anything like that so you don't need to solder directly to the track. It's a pretty cool system, it took me a little bit to get used to because when I used to run N scale, I used the Bachman Easy Track, which I really do not like. This stuff seems to work much better. It's a thinner rail all around, seems like a way better system. Instead of using that transformer that plugs into the wall, we're gonna be using these components right here. All right, everyone, so these are the parts we're going to use to build this voltage regulator and power source that will be completely portable. You guys can play with trains in the middle of the woods if you'd like, you know, wherever you want to mess with these. So let's start with the big black box. This is our power source. This is a battery, a utility battery, purchased on Amazon. I believe it's called, yeah, Talent Cell. So it's probably just a um, Chinese knockoff company. These names tend to change all the time but I will put the links in the description for all of these products used. All of these were found on Amazon, and this is a nine to 12.6 volt DC output uh, power pack, usually used to charge like phones. Online it said you can use them for LEDs and things like that as well. So uh, pretty cool. These are relatively inexpensive, but you know, not very heavy either. So set that over there. And they did send it to me fully charged, which is really cool. Uh, we'll see how long that lasts and you know I am doing this project a little bit earlier than the meetup so I do have time if this you know this isn't going to cut it I can actually switch out battery packs for something else so the next item also an Amazon purchase um, this is a voltage regulator for DC motors only and the max output on here I believe it said 12 volts DC at 5 amps which is great because our power pack here, the max output on there is two amps at 12.6 volts. We're probably not gonna have this train cranked up that high, <laughs> especially going around this small loop of track. Uh, I do like how it clicks. You get an on and off 
toggle on there. And this is easily wired. I'm not handling the circuit card. I don't wanna, you know, destroy anything on there. But on here, it says power, minus, plus. And then underneath it says plus, minus to the motor. This will go to our track and this will come from our power source. So I'm gonna set this down carefully over here. The last item, this is going to be our housing. So we're going to mount everything in here and um, you know, kind of clean up everything. But I wanted a nice box to put everything in. And this is from Outdoor Products. I've seen these before at camping stores and everything. Also purchased on Amazon. You can see it's water resistant. It has a tether, which is over here. So if you want to tether to something. Now for some reason they mentioned water sports, so cool. We will not be running our trains on a, uh, what's that, a canoe? <laughs> no thanks, we'll be good. So yeah, I wanted a watertight box, you know, just in case we have to travel somewhere. And there's an O-ring on the inside, so right there on the outer side. So this closes nicely, you know, you put these down. So I wanted a bigger box as well, so I can actually store trains in here to take on a trip. So potentially I could backpack to a site, bring the track and trains, and then run it from there. The other option, if I can, is to fit the track, this uh, small loop of track in the box, if I don't go with some type of uh, you know, mounting platform or anything like that. All right, so the first piece we're going to work with is our power source. So on top, they give you an on-off switch. Right now it's off, so that's the O for open circuit. You get a USB, I believe that's a USB out, not in. And then this is your DC in and out. And this is where your charger would also plug into when this unit is off. Uh, here's the charger pack that it comes with. Here's the uh, two wall prongs sticking out there. And I want to make sure before I cut anything that this fits in there so I don't cut the wrong adapter. So this is considered a male adapter. This is a female adapter. I wanted to make sure before I did anything, you know, because I have to cut one of these males, uh, I wanted to make sure I wasn't cutting the female adapter off because sometimes you never know with some of these janky power supplies, they may have put a female end on here. So we're gonna plug this guy up to our track side of the voltage regulator. So we're actually going to cut this, strip these wires. There's one. And I think I've used this wire cutter spacing. What is this? 20.22 on there. Isn't that crazy? So I'm going to take these, twist them. Yeah, they're braided wires. They're going to be fun to play with. So let's see. How do I get in there? We need a Phillips head screwdriver. So, we look at the bottom again, that, <laughs> all right, negative is towards me, there we go, this just goes in there like that, we close this terminal, close that down, nice and tight, I'm going to break or strip those screws out, and this one goes in here. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> All right. I'm hoping we don't see any blue smoke, but if we do, I'll still post this video. <laughs> Why not, right? And this is the Kato or Kato wire that comes with the uh, track, track terminals. You actually have to buy them separately. One thing I did like with the Bachman ready to run sets is that they always gave you that uh, re-railer piece, that's your terminal, and you could put them all over the train garden or train layout. And if your train would derail somewhere, you could put it somewhere hoping that it would, uh, you know, not mess up your day <laughs> trying to climb under a tunnel or something like that. So let's see. We're going to put the outer one as the white wire, so I'm assuming that is our negative terminal. I guess we'll find out. 
whatever direction the train goes. And eventually it shouldn't matter. There's one, there's one in there. I'm glad I don't have to solder. And I'm really trying to get away from soldering stuff. There's all four wires there. No solder, solder free. So I like that. All right, so here's the moment of truth. So we're going to plug this in to our battery pack. And like I said, if we see any white smoke or blue smoke, I did a good job. So let's see, I'm kind of afraid to find out. All right, the power pack is on. We have green, green lights there. So let's carefully, oh. Guys, we did it. Oh, it's stuck on my desk. Uh-oh, we derailed. <laughs> no. Let me uh, make a bridge here. Whoa. Yeah, check this out. I don't have the firm on the, on the table. I have to do like one of these. And guys, that is working off of this battery. Let me actually turn it off. And that's a pretty good speed. I don't think that's horrible. I mean, this is actually moving two motors. This is a powered A and a powered B unit. These are both Bachmann. So Bachmann tend to run a little crunchy, like some of the starter Bachmann stuff. But I think this is gonna work. And some of my model power stuff that requires even less power to run, and I think we're in good shape. Um, I also like how there is an LED. It's so small on the circuit card. We take the train off. This when it when it's on it gives you like the world's smallest LED and it's also hooked up to the potentiometer. So when you're all the way up, you can actually see the brightness increase. So that's really cool. Um, they'll tell me really it's a you know if the battery's on or not. So that's really cool. Let's get this mounted in the box and then we'll start running trains. All right, everyone. So here is the box. So let's open this up and. We can kind of place everything in here, you know, do a dry fit first, always dry fit things. Uh, I really don't want to attach the battery to the box, you know, like gluing it or something like that, just in case it needs to come out. So first let's sit this in there like that. You know, I, I want it to be down low so it doesn't have a higher center of gravity. So if I'm backpacking, it's not tossing all over the place. This is going to get mounted in the lid like that. So this will be through the plastic Yes, I know they'll kind of destroy the, you know, water resistant principle, but honestly, I just wanted a nice box to put this stuff in. Okay, so that is not a good fit, unless that sits in there like that. I just don't want to put stress on this cable. So what we'll do is actually run this like that towards us. So yeah, I don't want to stress out this, you know, adapter. God only knows where I can find another one of those unless I hardwire it to the battery. So, you know, for now, we'll just do that. And I've got this extra, uh, I believe this is the charge part. We'll put that in there too. So, remember which way this likes to fall in there. Then we're left with this piece. So maybe I can put this over here, but then I'm stressing out those wires. So we'll put her down here. <laughs> All right, after I close the door, this will line up. We can actually drill a hole right in there. All right, so I was looking at other places to drill that hole for the voltage regulator or potentiometer. So I've actually chosen this corner here. And the reason why that is, is because if when you open this and close it, the space underneath the potentiometer will become useless because you don't wanna mess up any of the electronics or any of this wiring to knock it loose. So we're going to drill the hole back in here. If I drill it here, that means every time you open up this lid, that's gonna be sticking out like that. So when you go to close it as well, it may hit this. You know, you can't store as much stuff in here like trains and all that fun stuff. So we're gonna go back to this corner. I'm also going to step drill it, which means I'm going to use a smaller bit than what the potentiometer knob requires because Acrylics and materials like this plastic here, or polymer, can be extremely brittle, so we're gonna step drill it. So we're gonna go 
right here. So let's first test it out, just you know, for argument's sake. Let's see. Yeah, we're gonna have to go a lot larger for the hole. A couple more drills up. And the drill index will show you all of the beds that you can use to step yourself up. All right, that's gonna work. It's nice and tight as well. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this in. I'll see you guys on the top side. All right, so the potentiometer is in there and I also um, use these um, pliers, but they don't have any teeth inside of them. It's just a you know, straight pair of pliers. And what you do is that I usually use these to tighten up things so you don't mark up or destroy you know, these smaller nuts. So now we can run all of our wires out for the track. I'm wondering if all I have to do is put a small hole in the side of the box. All right, instead of running a wire through the side of the box, I realized no matter what, because I'm using this Kato system or Kato system, I've got this track adapter, which is pretty much my track lock-on piece. It's a connector. It fits underneath of the track. So I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a notch out of this right here, taking the drill bit. All right, so I did the easy fix. I just put a notch right here for the track power out. So when we do close our box, you just tuck this here and watch this. Just close her up. Good to go. Clamp these down. And it's not putting as much stress on our wire, so we still have a nice wire out. You can actually see the wire on the inside moving when I tug on this. So, you know, yeah, it's solid. Um, <laughs> if you want to run your train out in the rain, go right ahead. It's probably going to be okay. So, let's test run this thing. Let's open her back up. Turn our power on. Just like that. Put our wire back down here. Close the box. And we get to take this lovely piece, put that underneath the lock on track. Well, there you guys go. You have a portable power source. The question will be how long will this last? everyone so as you can see it's very easy to set up uh, I believe the cars gave me more of a problem and the engine connecting to the cars than the actual track plan and getting the box set up so I think it's pretty funny as you can see she decided to push her consist of cars rather than pull it and that's because these uh, merchandise cars um, are kind of cheap <laughs> it was a set of four at a clearance sale at a train show many many years ago but anyways, the box is working. You're able to fit all of the track and a whole set of cars and a locomotive inside of here. So, I mean, what more could you ask for? It's pretty cool. Uh, this would be great if you're traveling, you know, going on vacation, to a friend's house, to a park. Really, anywhere you have a nice level space to do this. And if you'd like to, you can mount the track and have your power supply, you know, filled with cars and locos. That's another option to do, too. I'm probably going to keep it like this for now to have everything as a travel set in this container and I'll have to remember to bring that power adapter as well in my carry bag. But anyways, if you guys are new to the channel and you like seeing crazy projects like this, uh, please consider subscribing and make sure to hit that bell so you don't miss things like this as well. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' comments and give the video a like. You know, it's the easiest thing to do and it really helps out the channel. Uh, stay tuned for the Altoona trip. It's my first time there. 
But until then, have a great night and happy railroading.